I've spent a lot of time over the last few weeks counting seabirds here in the northeast of Scotland and I've also been reading this book here. Our seabird populations are a magnificent spectacle and at this time of year our coastal communities come alive with the sights, the sounds and the smell of several thousands of seabirds. The gannets that live here are thriving, however that is sadly not the case for most of our seabird species. all heard or read about the struggles that face our seabird populations. Global warming, rising sea temperatures, overfishing, ocean pollution, larger oceanic storms, predation from non-native species. Our seabird populations have got so many threats at the moment, but what can we do to help? So as a lot of my channel is based around photography, I thought I would start off by telling you how you, as a photographer, can help our seabird populations. Of course, photography is made to be enjoyed, and through the art of photography and getting out with your camera, you can connect with the natural world in a way which you may never have been able to before. However, one of the great things about photography is that an image can tell a thousand stories. But in this situation, photography can help us get a clear picture of what is happening to our seabirds and how they are behaving. So when you're out with your camera on the coast this summer, take as many photos of the seabirds as you can. Photograph them flying, photograph them building their nests, photograph them incubating their eggs, all the things which tell a story of their summer on the, in this country. Because one day these stories could help scientists work out what is happening to our seabird populations and so often recently photographers have got images of birds coming back with plastic, building their nests with plastic, all these things which help us get a bigger picture of why they're declining and help us connect with them more and understand the struggles that they face. However, while photographing seabirds is a fantastic way to understand their story, it does come with a warning. I have heard so many stories recently of seabirds losing their eggs because of inconsiderate photographers. So just remember when you're out on the cliff tops, don't get too close to the birds, don't make any sudden movements and after you've got your shot, slowly get away from the point that you're shooting from. Any sudden movements can make the birds jump off their nests and with that their eggs can end up falling down the cliff and smashing. These seabirds are already in decline. They do not need us humans making their struggles even worse. So when you're out with your camera, like I say, be considerate and think about these seabirds and the ethics around wildlife photography. The next point I want to go on to is the idea of education. How can we understand the struggles of these seabirds and, from a photography point of view, understand our subject matter if we don't understand the subject itself? So, get out there and educate yourself. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I am currently reading this book here. It's called A Seabird's Cry, The Lives and Loves of Puffins, Gannets and Other Ocean Voyagers by Adam Nicholson. This book came out, I think, at the end of last year, but the paper back 
has only just come out in the last month or two. I ordered this the other week and so far I've read about a quarter of it and I cannot recommend it enough. I know quite a few people who have read this and they have been blown away by it. This tells you all about our history of seabirds, how we've treated them over the years, how poets and musicians and songwriters have connected with them and how these sea creatures really embrace our imaginations and allow them to run wild. It shows us the struggles they face, the stories they tell and like I say how we have interacted with them throughout the years. I honestly find this a fascinating read. If you would like to read this book and learn more about it I will put a link in the description from where you can get it from Amazon. Like I say, learning about your subject matter and educating yourself about the struggles of our wildlife really allows us to connect with them more because how can we empathise with their struggles without understanding it? The thing is, us humans are basically run this planet. But while we may run this planet, it is important for us to care and nurture for the other beings which share this planet with us. And our seabirds are a magnificent population here on Earth. Their sights, their sounds, their smells, it just invokes so much into us as humans. It allows our imagination to run wild and it basically shows us you know, if seabirds can fly halfway around the world to breed and to enjoy their lives, then we can achieve anything as human beings. But like I say, we must nurture them, we must nurture the whole of nature, and in order to understand that and to, to grasp the struggles they face, we must educate ourselves. So, get out there and educate yourselves. If reading's not your thing, I would also highly recommend a series called Highlands, Scotland's Wild Heart. So this was on TV a few years ago now, it was narrated by the actor Ewan McGregor and it basically went round the seasons here in Scotland and all the wildlife species that kind of go through struggles throughout those seasons and how they interact with the Scottish landscape. In my opinion it was the best documentary based in Scotland around wildlife that I have ever seen and I've watched it quite a few times. The DVD is again available on Amazon and on other online stores and there is a clip on it from the island Handa Island. I was lucky enough to spend a week there last year working with the Scottish Wildlife Trust, one of the most magnificent weeks of my life. But there's an amazing scene in this DVD from Handa Island which shows the struggles that our guillemots face. Now guillemots are basically part of the auk family and they are, some people call them our Scottish penguins. They do look like mini penguins. They are a beautiful, beautiful seabird and they line our cliff tops in their thousands every summer. However, their numbers are in decline and the struggles that they face when they're rearing their chicks is, it's almost mind-blowing and this scene and this story on this DVD is so worth watching because again it allows you to connect with the species and allows you to understand the struggles they face and when we understand that we can empathise with them more and connect with them more. So like I say if you're interested in watching that series I would highly recommend ordering the DVD because again educating yourself on the subject matter allows you to connect with it more and if you care about something you want to get involved and that's what happened to me. I read a few books and I watched this series and a couple of other series and I got really into the idea of working in conservation. Right now I work full time in a voluntary job because I love it so much, working on our coastal reserves here in the northeast of Scotland, counting seabirds and doing all these other things and you know I do that because I love our wildlife and I want more people to get involved with that so if you're interested in seabirds and you're interested in all the struggles they face, do you know, get yourself educated and you can embrace this world and this nature and come and join me on this conservation journey whether it's volunteering your time to help out with stuff like this whether it's getting out with your camera to embrace nature and to photograph our seabirds or whether it's just caring enough donating money you know, getting involved in a cause it's well worth it and it makes your life so much more meaningful to know that you're making a difference to the species that are struggling here on earth right now. 
So I've spent most of the morning here at Troop Head, which is home to the Gannets, as I said at the start of this video, and their numbers are rising. However, I'm now going to transport myself to some other sites in the northeast of Scotland where the seabird populations that live there are struggling, as they are through the rest of Scotland. And I'm going to talk you through how I feel about that and, again, how I want you all to connect with this population here on Earth. So I'm now at Fells Hugh, which is situated also on the northeast of Scotland. Only this cliff top is home to many of the seabird species that are in decline. Here you've got the guillemots, the razorbills, the kittiwakes, the fulmers, and most people's favourite, the puffin. There's only about 30 puffins on this cliff top though. Their numbers are in incredible decline just now. It is so sad. And it, they are incredibly elusive and really difficult to see as well. Can you just imagine a world where these beautiful creatures cease to exist on our coastlines? It is so sad to think about and that's why it's so important for us to be aware of the issues they face, the struggles that they go through every day in order to survive and why we should all get involved with them and help save our environment and our oceans in order to protect these gorgeous species. This is the best office in the world. If that dolphin encounter about an hour ago wasn't enough, we've just seen them again. And it was even better this time. You could see them right underneath the cliffs. You could see the dolphins actually playing under the water together. I have never been on top of a cliff top before with the dolphins right underneath me. I'm so used to seeing them on the Murray Firth. We see them regularly when we're out rowing and just regularly from the coastline. But I've never seen them like this before and that was an absolutely unforgettable experience. Could you imagine a world where our seabird species cease to exist? Where these gorgeous cliff tops are completely bare and empty? It may never happen, but we never know what the future holds. I really hope this video has opened your eyes to the struggles that our seabirds face and has really got you interested in learning more about these beautiful species that inhabit our coastline. Because conservation matters and the more that we learn about our struggling species, the more that we can understand the troubles that they face 
and the more of us who get involved with conservation, the more of a positive impact we can all have on this planet and all the species that inhabit it. Thank you.